Pound test red to try. So the, the point is, the point is, guys, that you just you never, ever, ever know about what's going to happen. Let me see if I can get one more picture of this guy before I turn it off. Uh, <laughs> you never, ever, you never, ever know what kind of fish you're going to catch down the Texaco coast. Now, let's move on. How are we on time? Anybody? Break time. Okay, let's do this, guys. What we're going to do is, there's my little shark. When we come back, we're going to take a little bit of a break. And when we come back, what I want to do is I want to talk about what we do to rig these up, what we do to rig the big rigs up, and a little bit more about, about just general conditions down the beach. So we'll take a bite. 15 minutes, I guess, and then we'll come back. Thank you. Thank you. Two reasons. Number one is because of the shell banks which create that marine life, create the bait fish, create the game fish, and all that. The second thing is, is that you don't have to get wet. You got, you got deep water right out in front of you. So that you can stand on the beach or in some hip boots or for waders and basically serve fish without getting wet. Let me tell you something. Those fish, there are no fences at Big Show. They move all up and down the beach. Don't go down to down the beach as far as you can, but try to become a little more isolated so there's not a ton of people walking in the water getting out of the water. But as long as you're willing to get wet, to walk out that first sandbar, there's no reason not to fish anywhere along the Texas Gulf Coast. Okay? It's a matter of getting your bait and your lure into the water along the edge of the troughs, but try to get into them. Don't, I mean, I've seen some guys that, that showed up in the middle of the night and um, they get their stuff out, you know, and they got a lantern and they walk out to the edge of the beach and man, they get this thing and they see it drop and they go back there and they sit there all night on the house. In the morning, they go back out there and they're throwing into about 18 inches of water. There is no water there. You got, if you're gonna fish somewhere other than big shell and little shell, you gotta wait out to the first sandbar and throw them from there. Okay. During this time of year, guys, if you'll watch the paper, 62 degrees, and you're gonna get a lot of activity. Redfish, trout, pompano, sheephead. She fed her like a little more, they like jetties, they like peers, but they're still got they gotta move. And when they become migratory, they are gonna move up and down those, those troughs. But when it hits 68, traditionally that's when the bigger fish turn on. Black tips, bulls, uh, your bigger sharks turn on around 68 degrees. And they'll start moving. Oh sorry. They'll start moving back up and down the up and down the coast. So 68 degrees is the one you want to look for. During the winter time, late fall, we usually go down there with these three rods basically and leave everything else at home. But well, once that 68 degree temperature comes along, you've got to take those bigger rods. Okay? Okay. Now, the other thing that we talked about is, let me mention one thing. You guys have seen all this equipment and we're going to talk about it individually. Okay. How many of you guys know what this is for? Bait. Come on, you guys. Pay attention. Bait. Keep your neckties in the back. So that's what this is for? Kids. Keep your kids busy. Very good. That may be a surprise. That's right. This is for the kids. Let me tell you something. You want to get out of the house or just be a good dad? Take the kids with you. I think Give them this little puppy right here. And let me tell you something. They don't last too long, so you gotta take footballs and balls and they can you know, do something else. But let me tell you something, when the fish is on, and the fish are on, whether it's hard hit or, or whiting, let me tell you something, there's nothing like having your little kid with you to make the trip for all worthwhile. 
And let me tell you something, you get them out of those gangs, you get them fishing and start out right, so it makes a big difference. So don't forget this thing. Okay. Thank you. The next thing is this. Let's talk about let's talk about a little bit about why we're going to okay. All you guys are fishing. All you guys have been fishing with with bass rods and lightweight tackle. But it does the right job for you. I'm telling you, none of you guys, none of you guys are gonna go out in your in your brand new Ranger boat and take this puppy. Right? We might. That's right, it doesn't work. Okay, the idea is, is that when you go to a tackle shop and you're looking for tackle, get the guy to sell you the right equipment, okay? Now, the days of the independent tackle stores are coming to a quick end because, you know, I mean, everybody's got to make money, but Academy and some of the bigger stores, they're putting those guys out of business. But if you can find one, those are the guys to look for because they know what they're talking about. It's not somebody from the lingerie department at Kmart who's going to go and try to sell you a ride, okay? So try to get an independent dealer if you can. You never now, know. this rod right here, where else are we? The first thing that we wanted to do was we were going to go out and catch bait, okay? All right. So what we want to do is we want to go out and get a rod that's going to be plenty sensitive and it's going to have the, the whipping power to get out where you need to be, okay? All right. I mean, there is no biting on earth. There is no biting on earth that I know of that's going to eat this. It doesn't happen. So get yourself a little hook and catch bait. Now, these all pretty much look the same. These all pretty much look the same, but guys, they are very, very different. When you guys were up here before, this is actually my favorite ride. But I'm breaking. All right, this rod right here, the reason why this works, and I can throw 180 yards with it, is because several things. Number one, if, you want, if you're looking for distance, if you're looking for distance with a lot of muscle, you really got to look at a bait casting reel. I mean, I just really believe in it, which would make sense. Plus, you got to remember, as we learned earlier in the, in the evening, we don't have the boat captain to go in reverse, so you need as much line capacity as you can get. Now, the bigger the line, the shorter the cast. So you gotta find a happy medium. You don't want to get you don't want to get broke off every time because you've got you know too small a line, but the bigger you get, the shorter your cast is gonna be. Now, the other thing about this rod is, is that it's, all my rods are all about 11 and a half feet. It's a 10-foot blank with a foot and a half extension in the bottom of it to give it a little more back to But the, the fact of it is, is that it's got a pretty quick taper in it. Don't stick this book in my hand. It's got a pretty fast action tip, okay? And this is what you need. A good fast action tip. It's gonna give you some whipping power to get out that moderate size bait to catch that redfish. Yeah, remember? Okay, this is the reef that Jay caught that, that, that four and a half five foot shark on, but you gotta have a backbone, but traditionally you're gonna be catching trout and redfish, maybe pompadours on this kind of reef. All right, so you wanna have something that's got a faster action tip. Now, if you're not fortunate enough to have a, a, a way to get your bigger baits out, you're probably gonna wanna step up. This is also a Harrington blank. But if you look at the difference between this reel and this reel, certainly a considerable difference. Okay, the reel that's in my hand is a four-out reel, 40-pound test on it, 40-pound test, and we throw a seven-ounce weight on it. Okay, a seven-ounce weight. It's a lot of weight. But you can also throw a half or three-fourths of a good-sized whiting on it, and it has enough backbone to throw it out for you, okay? Now, this rig right here will just about, just about take on anything you're gonna catch on the Texas Gulf Coast. Just about, all right? Now, you know what it's gonna do for you, though? It's gonna make you work harder because of the length of your rod. If, in fact, you pick up a fish that's bigger 
than say a five foot or six foot black tip shark. This rod, because of all the play in the end of it, is not going to give you that backbone power that you need if you're going to step up even farther. So the first thing that we did is we went out and we bought shrimp and we caught a little whiting or perch or something for bait. Then we tied those on to the second to the second kind of rod right here, 17 pound test that we were throwing out there. And we caught, maybe we caught a pompadour or we caught a Jack Curvell. Okay, now all of a sudden, we're gonna do something else. Now it's time to talk about once we've caught the redfish and the trout and the pompano and the sheephead, and you guys say, I want more. We can give you more. Now it's time to get that Jack Curvell and take your filet knife out and chop them up. Now, let me tell you guys something. I walked in a little while ago, I walked a little while ago with one of those rods down there at the end and the guy asked me if I was going to cast them. And I said, I'm not going to be a him because you're just not going to do it. Now, I caught an 11 foot tiger shark on this rig. Took me about an hour and 55 minutes. Okay? Now, let me show you something. 11 feet of tiger shark. I was real fortunate that I landed it. Oh, good. <laughs> the reason why is so when you have 11 foot of tiger shark on this thing, and I had about a pound and a half of Jack Curvell sitting out there on this hook right here, how many of you guys think that that leader is long enough? Wrong. This is too short. Okay? Now, I was very lucky because nine times out of ten, this is a great rig for about a six foot shark. Maybe seven. And again, those sharks are on the edge of those sandbars. And I'm not talking about 50 miles out. I'm talking about from here to where that man's serving beer right there. All right? If you put your bait where those guys are, or where those fish move on, you're going to find them. Now, this happened to be a day when there was a lot of bait fish in near. And I put out this one piece of Jack Corvell out there with his one little hook, and this big old tiger came along. Now, traditionally what happens is, is that they'll take this thing in their mouth, and they roll up in it. Okay? And they'll kick, and they'll snarl, and they'll run around, and they'll roll themselves up to it, until they get to this. They can chew a lot easier through this than they can through this. So when they get up to the monofilament, it's all over with. Well, I was lucky enough that, that didn't happen. And we landed that big dog on the six foot, on the six hot, on the six hot rig. Now, this is not made for casting. Okay? What you've got to do if in fact you're going to cast it, it's not made for it. But if you want to go all the way out and get out as far as you can because you have no other way or you're getting old like I am and you don't want to swim those baits out anymore. I mean, I remember the days when we used to take bloody old Jack Carvel and swim them out 100 yards. Yeah, no more. <laughs> you know, you're walking along like this, dragging a piece of bloody bait because you want to catch a shark. That's smart. Yeah. <laughs> Now, if in fact you got a rig like this, and you got this big old piece of bait on this thing, and you cannot get it out any other way, what are you going to do? We have found the only way to cast this thing with this big old piece of bait in it. And let me tell you something sharks do not have a problem with sticking sharp things in their mouth. Now, we Texas rig shrimp sometimes, we hide, we hide. Uh, hooks and little pieces of cut bait, but most most fish, especially bottom feeders like redfish, drum, um, and certainly sharks as well, they are used to sticking so much stuff in their mouth that a little pick is not going to hurt. So what we do is we run this bait through this thing, and now it's, let's say my hand's the bait. What you do is, is you hang this thing 
on here. Now all of a sudden you're only casting this length instead of the entire length of the leader. And what if you try to cast the entire length of the leader with a pound and a half of bait here and a half a pound of weight, of, of weight here, I mean, it's going three different directions before you even throw it. And it usually doesn't go very far. If you hang it on the, on the, the, uh, the weight and then try to wing it out, then you've got a lot better chance of getting farther out. And as this thing goes off into the air, it always drops off and you get a decent cast out of it. Okay. But, again, not designed for casting. 50 pound test. Big long leader. The thing to do is to get yourself a good piece of bait, swim it out, get somebody to take it out for you, but get it out there. But don't cast it because it's going to hurt somebody. Now, get your buddy to swim it out. <laughs> Hold on. We're getting better here. Now, so I caught, so you catch a six foot shark, a seven foot shark on your little six foot leader. Now you think, hmm, we're going to become more successful. Let me show you what we do with these. Usually, if you put a bait out, think about this, guys. Think about being 20 miles from the nearest light bulb. There ain't guys with hats like this. <laughs> going by every two minutes, you know, and cars, and, you know, you see the freeway right down the street, you know, from the lake. I mean, you guys are 20 miles from the nearest light bulb, okay? And you fished all day with these little rods, and you're throwing them, and you're throwing them, and you're throwing them. You can throw lures, too, but you're damn tired. So, if right before the sun goes down, you get your six eyes and your bigger rigs, take them on out and let them sit. Then you can go to doing those other things, like drinking, or eating, cooking, relaxing a little bit, and these things are out there working, all right? Now, they're going to be sitting out there. Now, we have found that the best way to rig one of these, let me see if i got somebody's arms on. The best way to rig one of these things is this. If you catch yourself a good-sized fish and you want to chunk it, and you want to cut them up, and let's say that you have a piece of bait, 18 by 18 inches. How are you going to get this thing inside this bait? Or let's say even better, you've got a trout that you wanted to use against the lava. We would never do it, but they're damn good shark baits. But anyway, let's say you had a, a, a fish the size of a trout, about like this, and you wanted to rig this up. Okay, now you can stick it in the back, you can stick it in his eyes or something, but that's not going to work very well. If you get crabs eating on him, they're going to take this thing out pretty quick. All right. What we usually do is that, try to imagine this, is that if my partner was here who was supposed to be here, he had a film and be doing this too, but you start at the back of the bait, okay, here's this fish. Start at the back of the bait and enter the hook. Now, this hook now is going to be in this fish like this. Pull it all the way out like this, okay? Now you got a fish with a wire in it, but it's coming out of his back. That's no good. Stick the hook in the exact same hole that the wire came out of. And do it again. And it comes out again. Pull it out again. And now it's halfway up that fish. Keep sewing this hook into the bait until it comes out somewhere in his head. Hopefully his eyes if you can. If you can get this hook sitting like this, <laughs> sharks love to eat head. They do. They sit here and they'll attack that head almost every time they'll pick it up first. And if this hook is sitting backwards like this, and they take that head bite first, usually you're going to get you're going to get on. Okay, that's usually how we rig these size baits up. Now, as you see, this size leader right here is a great size leader for a six ox or a nine ox rig, something like this. Again, you're not going to cast this thing out, but you get it out there. You get it out there. You set that thing. Put it in your rod holder, and you're set for the night. And you start listening. Well, let me tell you something. There has never been a shark in the time that I've been fishing that came up and woke you up in the middle of your sleep and just took off. Never happened. And they wait till you're asleep asleep. And what they... <laughs> 
Let me tell you something. Big sharks are real picky folks. And what we usually find is that when we're through drinking about a case and a half of beer apiece, and we're all passed out in that trailer box over there. And let me tell you something. You think that you're asleep, an atom bomb went off, couldn't wake you up. And you hear it. <laughs> I've never seen so many Hispanics jump out of a trailer so fast. <laughs> talking about it. So we're all standing around his rig and looking at it. Like it's going to talk to us. Right? And it's just doing it. Nine, nine times out of ten sharks will come up, pick up a bait and move it and drop it. And they'll come back around again, pick it up, move it and drop it. I mean, I've even seen film of them where they sit there and they look at it. And I mean, it's just lay back. I don't know if they're being territorial or what they're doing, but they, they sit and they usually will just take a little bit of it. Now, when that puppy takes off, you usually got a fight on your hands. And what we have found in the past, what we have found in the past is that do not, you guys go out and, I love this part. I took a buddy of mine out fishing one time. We had four pounds of bonita on the end of a 30-foot leader. And we had four pounds of weight, of lead weight, to hold it in place. So he hears, okay, great, great, great. We set him all up, we got his harness on and all that. All of a sudden, his rod takes off. And I'm telling you, this rod is going downtown. And he goes, I said, set him. I am, I am. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If a fish is big enough to pick up a total of 10 pounds of weight and run with 200 yards of line connected to him with a drag, don't be afraid to set that thing. <laughs> okay? I mean, he's got a piece of meat this big in his mouth, and he's swimming, and you're going, mm. <laughs> no. I mean, you rear back and set that guy. And set him five times, six times, it don't matter. Because once it's down in his mouth, you want to catch him somewhere, okay? And he is going to be going. Now, <laughs> that doesn't Michael, happen to me all the time. Michael, uh, let me tell you all something. This is about, if you want to get successful, and let me tell you something, guys. You don't have to buy all this baloney here to go surf fishing. You don't. <coughs> you just get yourself your regular rod, and I will entangle this. Uh, you get your regular rod and you can get started. But if at some time in your career of fishing you want to go out and try it, that's what it's going to take. 30 foot a liter, at least a couple of hooks, at least a couple of hooks. And if you don't think that those 12 and 13 foot fish are out there, they are out there. And I'm talking about less than 200 yards offshore. When when sharks come in to mate, or actually not to mate, but to actually drop their puppies, that water gets real regular with sharks. And some of those big, big sharks come in behind them. And they are out there. So every one of you guys have got the opportunity to go out and catch those kinds of fish. They, they are really, really out there. I would certainly suggest, though, that if you're going to get out there, that you try to, to be as careful as you can when you're dropping baits. And whether we're talking about this kind of fishing, when you're fishing for the, when you're fishing for bait, and you're throwing this stuff, where, against the bars, like Jay did in that first piece, he threw this lightweight right up against the bar, and he caught his bait for that shark that he caught on the second bar. Well, when you rig up a six eye or a four eye, get it out to the inside or the outside of the second bar, or maybe the inside of the third bar. If you get out into a six hot or a 12 hot reel, put it where? On the bar, inside or outside, but maybe the third bar, at least. Okay? But let me tell you something. There is no, the biggest, probably the biggest reason why people don't catch big sharks is because they take their baits too far. That's almost always the case. When there's no more breakers, there's usually no more sharks. You're thrown into a big black void out there. Just like going to Calaveras and going to the middle of the lake. 
That's not going to work. Those fish, remember what we talked about, guys? Bait fish, okay? They're all, the only reason they're there is because they're there to feed. So if you, if you put bait where they're going to feed, you're going to pick up some big fish. If you put it past where they usually are, you're just, you're just weakening your own chances of not being successful. So, I think we've covered uh, pretty much all the equipment. Uh, is there any, is anybody have any questions before we go to something else? Yeah, most of your cables that you're setting up, that's aircraft cable or what that you buy? Most of the stuff came from Kelly Air Force Base. Well, I wouldn't no. say that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, <well. laughs> I mean, they spent 5000 for a hammer. I mean, when you get I'm that only one. kidding. No, this is a 60-knot cable. You can buy just about anywhere. What pound test is it? Just rated a knot? 60 yeah. Knot. What size hooks are standard hook? Well, anything from a 10-knot to a 12-knot. See? When you, guys, when you guys are out there fishing, how many of you guys own more than one rod? Anybody? Yeah. Okay, these are all mine. It'd be pretty stupid for me to get all of them rigged the same and throw them all in the same place. Makes no sense. The smart thing to do is nine times out of ten, this size hook is going to pick up a big fish. And it hooks them just as good. Be well, usually. Okay? Because a 12 foot hammer or a 12 foot big bull shark is a rarity. I mean, they're there. They come.